Hello and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter. Today's a really big release for Blender. They've just released Blender 4. Uh, the stable version is currently taking a very long time to download, so I'm working with beta. Now, I've been using Blender since 2.78, just before the principled shader, the version before the principled shader, whichever that was. When that was introduced, and at the time the principled shader was super exciting. Since then, Blender's come up in both reputation and reality to be more than just the janky hobbyist software that it was once perceived to be, and it, it kind of was at one stage. Now it's very much becoming a professional level software, and a lot of new features over the years have made that happen. Things from EV Render Engine, geometry nodes and the vast improvements in the sculpting side of things. Um, today I'm going to cover some of my favorite new features in Blender's latest release 4.0 and they're real game chamber changes from quality of life to quality of light. And so stick around and let's get stuck in. So I've set up this little scene. Uh, just before we go, I've updated Ngon Pro to version 1.35. I'll upload that tonight. It's all compatible with um, Blender 4.0 and it's got some quality of life features which I'll cover in another uh, video. Um, so that's that. So first of all, what you may notice is that Blender looks slightly different. Um, the font has changed. Um, and I quite like it personally, so all the menus and it looks a little bit more slick or modern or whatever. Um, I've already edited my themes a little bit because, you know, we make pretty things, so why not make our UI pretty as well? So that's the first thing that you might notice opening Blender 4. The second thing is the modifier stack has changed. So instead of coming out with all of the modifiers, it's gone into its um respective categories which i don't know how i feel about i kind of had a muscle memory for where everything was but i guess i'm just going to have to get used to it and it does make more sense now and it's a lot tidier the next thing um in if we go into shading the principal shade has been cleaned up and everything's got drop downs now so instead of being the one big long shader that we had before uh once again something I'm going to have to get used to um, and I believe that the cogs in the background it's it's a brand new version of the principal shader so uh, things are working a lot more realistically in terms of light might do might go deeper dive into that on another video but um, moving on uh, this is one of the coolest new features and since I've been using plasticity I've been loving um, this is just a real quality of life for modeling. So for example, what we can do is um, if we grab an object like that, we can press B and we can choose whether to snap to a vertex or an edge. So if I choose this uh, vertex and then grab it, maybe that was the wrong vertex to choose. So if I choose this vertex, and grab it it will snap to that so that's really cool because if you're just like quickly blocking out a scene um, I could shift D to duplicate B for vertex choose this one place that there and then I can go just shift R and hold down shift R and I can make stairs into infinity and that was super quick that's uh let's do that one more time so I went shift D to duplicate B for snapping chose the center Plonked it there and then just went shift R to repeat and that was just a handful of clicks so something like that is super useful and I think that's awesome and especially like I've enjoyed all of the plasticity snapping settings and things like that it's just something that you could still do kind of previously in Blender uh, it's just a lot easier now um, you just you know you don't even have to change your snapping settings over here Oh, uh, next thing is um, AGX. So if we come over here to our scene settings for cycles. Okay, I'm going to just turn uh, rendering on. And you can see this scene. And if we go down to color management, you'll see we're in filmic. So before we had 
standard and filmic and there's a new color space called AGX don't ask me what it stands for uh, but it does light transport a lot better and it interprets uh, lights a lot better so just watch the sign that says two meters and see what happens so you can see that's dulled down in light so what it's actually doing is it's giving more spectrum of light and more uh, nuance in the bright light uh, lum luminance spectrum so I think I've got these colored balls here so you can see that going on here well, let's just hide this one and let's just change that back to filmic and you can see what happened see in filmic the emission so if we look at the material of this it's just uh, the emission is red base color white and so you can see that it's showing all of the color and then if we go to um, down here and we change it back to AGX you can see it's a lot paler but it's still emitting that colored light so if we just hide these two you can see that's still emitting that red light and that gives you a lot more definition I'll pop a screenshot up on screen of a comparison um, so that's really cool so that means that we're going to be able to get much more realistic and much more clearer renders next uh, light linking okay so uh, light linking I've done a cut I've done a video on this when a very early uh, beta version of blender 4 came out because I was super excited about it and it was a bit janky it still is a bit but it's um, now in blender so let's have a look at that we'll hide these colored balls and we'll turn on these lights so as you can see my character here is highlighted by a blue light there is it blue yeah a blue light so we'll make it more blue to really emphasize that and that's got a power of 39 and let's make this power of 39 too so you can see that these blue light is combining these two things to make green and we've actually got two shadows so if you're doing like film um, if you want more cinematic renders you sometimes don't want all of the lights to affect everything in the scene you might just want it to affect one object for example so as you can see I've got these two lights and they're both blending to make a green uh, light in the scene and I've got two shadows here as well so um, what I want to do I want to grab this blue light and I only want this blue lights to be really affecting the character as a kind of a cinematic effect or a rim light of a kind so that we can just move the light around get it a little bit more cinematic okay and then go down to object properties uh, light linking new and just drag our male base mesh into there and as you can see the light is affecting him but now we've only got the orange light in the scene so we could maybe just make that a little bit more um, like a I don't know like a neon street light so yeah that's kind of how light linking works which is great now all of this is really great and I think it's really awesome I think light linking is awesome I think AGX is awesome so you know, even with this on we've got our AGX if we change back to filmic you can see that we're getting much uh, lesser colors than we are in AGX and AGX is just way 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 cooler looking and way more cinematic and professional looking um, so that's that but finally I really want to cover this new aspect um, I'm it's geo nodes has the ability to make tools so what we'll do we'll go back into let's go into geometry nodes okay and over here you can see that you've got modifier or tool so you want to change it from tool because we're wanting to make a new geometry nodes tool okay and we'll just create a new okay and I just want to show you something that I you know I was playing around before and this is pretty cool really really simple stuff I'm not a big geo nodes guy but I think I've made something that I'd actually use on my first couple of tries so what I want to do is I want to make something that's similar to the um, Dynamesh in 
ZBrush. I mean, it's not going to be exactly the same. Let's just choose a different matte cap. I do like to have a play around with that. Um, so as you can see here, I've got an OBJ Engon based mesh from uh, Plasticity. Uh, you may recognize this model from the first Plasticity uh, thumbnail that I ever did video, which went um, semi-viral, which, you know, kind of spring springboarded this channel. So what we're going to do, we're just going to bring in a couple of nodes. So I'm going to search for mesh to volume. Um, this one here. All right. And then I'm going to search for volume to mesh. And we've got those two here and I want one more, which is uh, set shade smooth. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to make two separate. Um, we're going to call this one remesh optimal. You'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to do make two new tools for two different workflows. Um, and both of them will be uh, editable. So what we'll do for this one, I just want to we'll move that to the right. We'll make a couple of duplicates. The first one, um, we're just going to set this one density to five, voxel amount to 512. The threshold to 0.05 on that so and then the adaptivity to uh, zero in this case okay so the mesh to volume turns the mesh into a volume um, and then volume to mesh turns the volume back into a mesh and then we're shading it smooth okay so we're going to plug our geometry into where the mesh goes volume to volume mesh to geometry and geometry to geometry okay and just while i've got it i'm just going to duplicate these and i'm going to make a i'm just going to unlink the data block for a second and we're going to call this remesh even okay and we're just going to paste those in there we'll go back to our original one we're going to pull our density into our group input our voxel amount our threshold and our adaptivity okay so this is our tool it's called remesh optimal now geometry nodes tools only work in edit mode for now but let's see what happens hopefully this doesn't crash my computer um, we're going to go remesh optimal because this is the first one we made okay and we'll see what happens oh that is, was meant to be remesh even <laughs> those settings so we'll call this one remesh even and what you can see is we've remeshed this oh and we make sure it works in sculpt mode as well so you go to modes and turn it on in sculpt mode as well so this is made a remesh like that this is going to be our remesh optimal okay so what we're going to do we're going to set the other settings here we're going to say um three no we're gonna no this is gonna be five five one two threshold 0 0.025 and adaptivity 0 0.01 and then we're just gonna do the same and we're gonna plug all of these into here and make sure our geometry is plugged into there and into there okay so Let's duplicate this and we're going to call this remesh optimal. Okay, so let's have a look here. Let's see if this works first time. We'll be lucky. Okay, so. Okay, so you can see that is a completely different um, topology. But what we're doing is we're both, in both cases, we're remeshing the object. So this is this little uh, page here. Remesh even. Okay. And we're getting very similar results. This one is giving a much higher poly result. And this one's giving a lower poly result. And as you can see, uh, it's a bit flatter. So depending on your workflow. So make sure this works in sculpt mode as well. Okay. 
So depending on your workflow, you might want to remesh for sculpting like a, a Dynamesh. And if you look here, these voxel remeshes are very much voxel remeshing uh, it. So um, depending on your workflow, um, you might want to remesh these differently for sculpting and details to um, something like uh, in Blender, you know, obviously ZBrush has uh, all of these tools and Blender also has tools for this, but I, I think that's really cool. And then what we can do that's even more cool is we can mark this as an asset and then we can mark this as an asset. Okay. And then we can go to our set dressing and we just type in remesh here and we can find it here in our asset library and then we just make a new catalog and we can call that tools okay and then we go to our unassign and we just drag that into tools save it and then when we go back to our layout mode we can go into edit mode and now we've got these here and we can even um, assign them to our quick favorites so now we've got remesh even here and go into oh go into edit mode and we've got remesh optimal here add to quick favorites and we can just um remesh optimal there and then what you can do you can go over into sculpting mode okay so we're in sculpting mode now and you can start to smooth things out a little bit if you like um and then let's say you want to turn on dino topo and then we can make some like welding joins and this remember this is our optimal mesh and that looks really crap but you get the picture and then if we moved over to our other mesh we can we've got a bit more detail so just a cool little way to make tools now like the sky's the limit like obviously this is like a really simple graph like some of the graphs you can make um the next thing i want to try is i want to try making a circular array tool with editable functions um but yeah cool that's my favorite features from blender 4 thanks a lot for watching and um see you in the next one i have recorded another tutorial and i made two boo-boos and then i forgot to switch record on the third try so i'm giving it a couple of days and i'm going to try again um, but that's upcoming and that's a plasticity to blender uh plus substance texturing workflow that i think some of you might really really like for uh, game design stuff anyway see you in the next one Tschüss.